dear friends good morning now we are going to we are going to study year you can see over here this is the whole diagram of year where this whole year is divided into three parts there is tympanic membrane over here the part lateral to tympanic membrane is known as external ear the part behind tympanic membrane the small part is known as middle ear and just behind this middle ear you can see this part this is internal ear now this today we are going to study only external ear this external ear is composed of two parts you can see over here those two parts this is that part which we can see on the surface of our body this part is known as pinna and this pinna leads to a canal like structure inside just till tympanic membrane this part is known as external acoustic meatus these two parts will be studying separately today just now we will be seeing pinna pinna if you see pinna that is a projection of the ear on the surface this pinna is an irregular surface this irregular surface is having two surfaces one is that is facing laterally this is that is lateral part and one is facing medially that medial part is also known as cranial part because it is facing towards cranium that's why it is known as cranial part now on this two surfaces wherever there is elevation on lateral surface at the same point there is depression on the medial surface now what are these lateral surfaces having different elevations and depressions this lateral surface of the auricular pinna is irregularly concave faces slightly forward and displays numerous eminences and depressions here you can see many emination elevations and many depressions now what are these elevations known as its prominent curved ring that is this margin that is at the border this prominent ring is known as helix except parallel to this helix there is another elevation this elevation is known as anti helix these two are parallel to each other helix anti helix now on the helix just posterior superior part in some individual it is very clearly seen in some individual it is not clearly seen but definitely it is clearly palpable if you feel this posterior superior part of the helix you'll find a small tubercle like elevation is there this tubercle is known as darwin's tubercle darwin's tubercle this is darwin's tubercle or auricular tubercle anti helix divides about now this anti helix if you see anti helix this anti helix has two ends a superior end and an inferior end the superior end if you see it divides into two crura these two divisions are known as crura now this two division converts this part elevation into a triangular fossa so there is a triangular fossa anti helix divides above into two crura flanking a depressed triangular fossa the curved depression between the helix and anti helix is the scaphoid fossa this is the depression 
which is marked by these two elevations, helix and anti-helix. So this is helix, this is anti-helix. In between these two, there is a depression. This depression is known as scaphoid fossa. Below this is the lobule, the lower part. If you see this part, which is very much soft, flexible, this part is known as lobule. The anti-helix encircles the deep fossa. Now, if you see, just medial, that is the part where you have a earbud, where you normally put your earphone or like that. This whole depressed part is known as concha. Anti-helix encircles of deep fossa, the concha of the auricle. Now, this concha is having again two parts. This whole depressed part is having two parts. Now, if you see, the uh, auricle, this. Now, here you can see this whole depressed part is there. This depressed part is up to here. Now, this is anti-helix. This anti-helix divides superiorly to two crura and bounds this superiorly is a triangular fossa and this is helix, this is anti-helix. Now the, in between these two helix is the depression. This depression is known as scaphoid fossa. On this you will find here this is auricular tubercle or Darwin's tubercle. Now this is another depression. Now if you see this depression, this is a big depression. This deep depression is encroached. It is encroached by this helix. This part of the helix, superior part of the helix. This part of the helix is known as crust of the helix. This is known as crust of the helix. This part encroaches and divides this whole depression into two parts. The part above this and the part below this. The part below this is known as concha. The part above this is known as simba conchi. So this is simba conchi. This is concha. Now this concha is a concave depression. This, anti, this here is the anterior part of the concha. In anterior part of the concha, you will see that you are encroaching into the ear. This is the part where we enter the inter, external ear. We enter the external ear or it is also known as external acoustic meatus. Now, this anti-helix, if you see in the anti, in inferior part, you will find an elevation. This is elevation. And there is another elevation exactly opposite to it. This elevation is known as tragus. The exactly opposite, this is known as antitragus. Now, this is the notch which is present between two tragus. Anything present in between two triangular tri uh, thing, we use term inter. We use term inter. So this is inter tragic notch. This part is known as inter tragic notch or inter tragic incisura. If you correlate this to the stomach. In the stomach also, on the lesser curvature, the most dependent part is known as gastric incisura. So here also, it's the same thing is there, intertragic incisura. So this is intertragic notch or intertragic incisura. This is small part, which is fibro fatty. It is covered by skin and this is known as lobule. Now, what is the blood supply and nerve supply of pina? <clears throat> this pina is divided into two parts, lat lat lateral surface, medial surface. Now this lateral surface, if you see, this lateral surface is continuous with the skin of the face. 
that is the parotid region. It is continuous with the skin of the parotid region. On the posterior side, if you see, this is continuous with the cranial surface, which is covered by the skin. So, the blood supply and nerve supply will be those which are over here from the first face and this will be from those from the behind the ear. So here you will see the most important is posterior auricular branch of the external carotid artery. This is blood supply supplying three or four branches to the cranial surface. So this is posterior auricular I told you that the part which is cranial is continuous with the skin of the cranium. So whatever blood supply, nerve supply is present over here is going to supply this part. So this is posterior auricular branch of the external carotid artery which is supplying cranial surface. The anterior auricular branch of the superficial temporal artery. I have been telling you again and again in different lectures that you can feel superficial temporal artery over here. This is terminal branch of the external carotid artery. So this artery is supplying lateral surface. So the anterior auricular branch of the lateral superficial temporal artery is distributed to the lateral surface and there is a small branch of the occipital artery. Veins. Now these veins are corresponding with the same of the artery that is superficial temporal, posterior auricular, occipital vein, all those things. Lymphatic drainage. Lymphatic drainage, these drains into, this is closely related to parotid gland. So parotid lymph node, especially the node in front of the tragus. Just in front of the tragus, there is a node which is, which is draining pinna. The upper deep cervical lymph node and the mastoid lymph node. As I am telling you again and again and again that all these nerve lymphatic are finally drained into deep cervical lymph nodes which are present along the sternocleidomastoid muscle and external carot this uh, external jugular vein. So along this whatever lymph nodes are there, they are finally draining this area. So this even this parotid lymph node will be finally draining into the superior deep cervical lymph node. Nerves. Now this is very interesting. I have been telling you that just recall your nerve supply of scalp. The part posterior to the uh, ear was supplied by great auricular nerve that is coming from most important point that is herbs point just at the middle of the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle the three nerves are coming one of the nerve is great auricular nerve. This great auricular nerve comes and supplies the most part of the cranial surface, posterior part. Again, the nerve that is going to the skull behind ear is supplying cranial part. I am again telling you that the part that is cranial is continuous with the skin of the skull. So this is great auricular nerve. Posterior part of the lateral and posterior part of the lateral surface that is helix, anti helix and lobule. Only lower part is supplied by great auricular nerve. Lesser occipital nerve supplying the upper part of the cranial surface. Lesser occipital nerve, upper part of the cranial surface. The auricular branch of the vagus supplying the concavity of the concha and the posterior part of the eminentia. Now, this is vague auricular branch of the vagus nerve. So, vagus nerve is also supplying this part. This part, not only this part, but also external acoustic meatus is also supplied by vagus nerve. That is the reason, not only that external acoustic meatus, but also tympanic membrane is supplied by vagus nerve. 
and that is the reason I have been telling you again and again and again that wherever Vegas goes, that part if it is stimulated is going to give rise to reflex coughing. So remember always that coughing is a pathology not only related to respiratory tract. It is also related to the vagus nerve. So vagus nerve is going to stomach, irritation in the stomach, that is gastritis, is going to give rise to coughing. Irritation of the tympanic membrane by anything, by hair or anything, is going to give rise to coughing. Similarly, if you use earbud in the external ear, the moment you scratch it with the earbud, you are going to get cough reflex. So this is all because of this vagus nerve. The auricular temporal nerve, this is supplying the tragus crust of the helix and the adjacent part of the helix. Now the remaining part of the lateral surface on the superior surface is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve. Facial nerve, which, with which the auricular branch of the vagus nerve probably supplies a small area on the both aspect of the auricular auricle of the depression of the concha and over the eminence. Now this is what it is talking about concha and eminence. This is depression on the lateral surface. Correspondingly on the cranial surface there is elevation. This depression is causing elevation on the cranial surface. This elevation is known as eminentia. This elevation is known as eminentia and that is supplied by the great auricular nerve as well as vagus nerve. So that's all about pina. Thank you very much.